hey everybody thanks for being here thanks for sticking around all day um i hope you got to sit in on quite a few topics i hope you learned something um this has been an awesome day for me at least so um as i've said uh, several times today and i'm assuming the other moderators have also mentioned that these sessions are being recorded um and please use the q a feature to post any of your questions um our last speaker in this track is Juan Carlos Gonzalez Martin, who will be talking to us about monitoring and analytics capabilities available to us out of the box for Power Platform. So welcome, Juan. Uh, we're glad to have you, and you can begin as soon as you're ready. OK, thanks, Jason. Thanks for having me. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this new session in this awesome event. I will be start to share in my uh, desktop. In this case, I'm going to use PowerPoint Live so there we go. Yeah, hope you can see my screen. Yes, I see on the other screen. Perfect. So yeah, as I say, uh, hello everybody. Thanks for uh, being in my session. Thanks Jason for having me and the rest of the organization team. And in this session, we are going to talk about analytics in Power Platform. What options do we have? We are going to talk about uh, out of the box features, as Jason said, but also what is possible in a custom way. Sorry to interrupt. It looks like your screen is black, at least for me. Uh, I can't see on the other. Let me see. Let me try again because I have another uh, screen and I can see it's, I'm sharing it so strange. Let me try again. Can you see it now? It's coming. Yep. Now, now I do, yeah. OK, perfect. Well, maybe kind of delay thing. So yeah, it was I was on the first slide, so not a problem at all. So let's move forward to the next slide. So this is the title of the session. Of course, uh, thanks to our awesome sponsors, Synology. Um, yeah, thanks for the prize. I, it's very, a very nice, nice one. So I hope any of you can uh, grab it at the, at the event. And yeah, here I am. So my name is Juan Carlos Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft 365 Apps and Services MVP. Um, and here you can see some of my content details just in case after the session you want to ask me anything about the content uh, you are going to see or you are going to listen to, or maybe about um, any other stuff around Microsoft 365, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, and so on. And please connect with me through LinkedIn. Um, yeah, you can email me also. So with that, let's talk about possibilities we have when talking about analytics in Power Platform. Well, first of all, we have, of course, out of the box, out of the box features. That means that uh, in the box, we are going to have different analytics at different levels. We will see in the demo, we are going to have 10 level analytics, environment level, and then, of course, uh, at the app level and the power atomic level. Then, when talking about analytics and monitoring, of course, it seems, let's say, the Power Platform and Microsoft 365, 365 they are in the same family. We can take advantage of uh, the auditing events features we have in Microsoft 365, that means that we are going to be able to audit some of the events that Power Platform triggers. So we are going to be able, for instance, to see if some themes happening around Power Apps or Power Automate or Dynamics 365. Then it's possible also with the other cloud that is also in the family. I don't know if it's a big brother or not. Uh, that means Azure, we can connect, uh, let's say that, uh, our Power Apps and also Power Automate to Azure Application Insights. That's very interesting because we can have some kind of telemetry about uh, what the users are doing, if they are having any issues, any errors, and so on. And last but not least, uh, why not? We can have custom monitoring. That means that we can build our custom solution, uh, taking advantage of the connectors framework for both uh, Power Apps and Power Automate. And 
uh, to me, uh, even uh, the COE is something that is sponsored by Microsoft. Is also in the end a custom solution where we are going to have monitoring features too. So we will see some of the screenshots where we can see some analytics around apps, around environments, and um, many other things. Um, the good thing is that the starter kit is provided for free, so you can use it. The only thing is that you need to have Dataverse as a uh, one of the requirements and then you are ready to start using it. So what about Power Apps? So I will be starting talking about possibilities in Power Apps, then we will move to Power Automate and then to the rest of the topics I just disclosed in the previous slide. So talking about Power Apps, we are going to have 10 level analytics. That means that we are going to have like a big picture of everything that is happening in terms of, for instance, usage, in terms of makers activities and so on at the tenant level. Then we can go down to the next level. That means environment analytics. So environment that means, for instance, they can have a kind of big picture also a data analytics a dashboards where they can see again some kind of usage information about apps. Same is going to happen with Power Automate, so, but we will see this in the demo. And then, of course, we have single app analytics. So as you know, per app, we can have also some uh, analytics provided by default. One important thing is actually who can access um, the different analytics we have at different levels. Well, it depends. So at the tenant level, it's quite obvious that we are going to need a kind of admin role. So for instance, if we are environment admin on different environments, we can have access to the tenant level analytics, but only for those environments we, where we are where we are admins. And if we are program platform admins, we uh, are going to have access to the tenant analytics. And the same happens with Dynamics 365. Of, and of course, if you are a Microsoft 365 global admin, you are going to see everything. So this is actually, as you can see here, how the tenant level analytics looks like. As you can see, uh, we have like three main sections, usage, makers activity and then apps inventory um, uh, on every section we are going to see like different information such as as you can see here unique users total sessions and of course uh, the different apps we have the most used ones uh, top environments and so on everything is built on top of power bi that's very interesting and yeah if you are asking yourself uh, in which types of apps uh, do we have a uh, analytics at the tenant level for the moment we have for canvas apps and for the mo for model driven apps by default tenant level analytics is not enabled in your tenant that means that you have to enable it um, as soon as you enable it and you make a consent then behind the scenes i guess there are some different jobs they are going to start taking data from your apps um, you are going to have this dashboard very nice dashboard with filled with information so in here you can see some of the details what is included in the usage area of the of these dashboards unit users total sessions app users and top apps same with makers activity so we're talking about active apps previous apps active makers again new makers top makers and then we have an inventory of our apps and of course the good thing is that we can export this data uh, so we can actually create create our custom analytics reports. That means that we can do it on using Esther or why not create our um, Power BI dashboards and reports. So this is actually how it looks like when you want to enable tenant level analytics. It's very, very straightforward. You have to do through the Power Performance Center. Uh, you have this toggle. You have to uh, just uh, put it on and then make the consent and then you are ready to go. If we go down to the uh, next level, we are going to have the environment level analytics that in essence is the same. But in this case, uh, we don't need to be Microsoft 365 Global Admin. We only need to be environment admin and we can see the analytics for our environments. But of course, Power Platform admins, they can filter by environment. The same happens with Dynamics 365 admins and the same happens with Microsoft 365 Global Admins. Again, uh, this feature is available for Canvas apps and model driven apps. And of course, since it's based on the same tenant level analytics, you first need to enable it and then make the consent. And you are going to have 
in this case, the report you are seeing in the screenshot. So we are going to have information about usage, location, toast errors, service performance, and then connector usage. About visualization window, I can say it changed depending on the level. So in this case, it's very well documented too. It's uh, 28 days. Um, the data refresh cycle is every three, every three hours. We're going to have fresh data in the dashboards, in the reports. Those are uh, different screenshots. They are taken from the documentation, but we will uh, we will have a closer a closer look in the demo. Not with, uh, not with so many data because in my demo environment I have like two, three, four apps, and uh, you see normally like one two users. But here you can see actually the different kind of the charts, the different kind of dashboards you are going to have depending on if you are talking about usage, about occasions. Uh, those errors, service performance, or yes, co connectors activity. Then the very last level is app level analytics. Same kind of description as you can see here. Indeed, in order to see uh, analytics at the app level, you only need to be environment admin, um, of course, power app owner. This one is only available for Canvas app. Interesting, it's not available for modern Raven apps. And uh, you can view in here usage, performance, and location information. Here is why I say that the time window for data visualization is different. In this case, I don't know why. It's 30 days instead of the 28. And as you can see here, the data refresh cycle is every 44 hours. You know, those kind of inconsistencies you have sometimes uh, with the Microsoft Cloud. So let's say that. Of course, I was forgetting database analytics. So if you are heavily using Dataverse, uh, you are going to have also some analytics in terms of your active users, API calls, API pass traits, executions, and so on. Who can see actually um, Dataverse analytics? Well, environment admins, Power Platform admins, Dynamics 365 admins, and Microsoft 365 global admins. And you can, as you can see here, we have different information available. Data visualization window is 30 days. Um, yeah, you can download analytics data to create cast your custom analytics reports. Again, using Excel, Power BI, or whatever tool, uh, analytics tool you have. So let's go for the first demo. So I'm going to access a virtual machine. I have in Azure. Yeah, it's in here. So as you can see, I have already opened um, uh, the, a lot of the stuff over here. So I have like different power apps open. So at least I can have some kind of data in my uh, dashboards, in my reports. And um, yeah, here you have the, um, let's say the, um, the tooling for seeing your apps and created them. As you can see here, you can actually just change the environment you are working on. In this case, I have like a development environment in my home, my this is a production tenant. I have like different apps, very simple apps. Indeed, some of them are coming from Microsoft samples. And uh, let me see actually where is the, I don't know if I did, I opened the Power Platform in Center. I, I don't think so. So I'm going to not to open it because we are going to start from the top to, to down. So tenant level analytics and then move down to environment level analytics. And then last level is of course, uh, Per apps analytics. So I have here my access to the admin center and a global admin in this tenancy. So I have access to the Power Platform Admin Center. So I'm going to authenticate here. And yeah, I'm accessing the admin Power Platform Microsoft Com Home. Okay, I already use this. So as you can see here, we have this analytics section. And in here I have like different menus. So since we are focused on Power Apps, I can click on Power Apps. As I mentioned to you, in my case, I already enabled the minimum level analytics. So that's why I'm seeing this uh, analytics for all the environments. Since I don't have a lot of apps, that's the reason why you are not seeing um, as much data as uh, you see in the slides. So let's move to instead of environment level to tenant level. So again, Power BI behind the scenes. And um, yeah, this is the familiar uh, format you see in the, in the deck. Not a lot of data because I don't have many apps in here, but at least you can see uh, top apps by unique users. You can see some tendencies over here, such as total sessions, app being used, new users, and so on. 
And then you can start moving between uh, usage, maker activity, app inventory. And of course, you have some filtering here, depending on, uh, in this case, environments, uh, the type of environment can be the default environment, of course, production, sandbox, or trial one, and of course, the region. In my case, since I'm based in the Netherlands, in Europe, I only see uh, environments in Europe because they were created there. But of course, as you know, we can create environment in different regions. So if that's the case, you are going to see here your uh, regions. As you can see here, we can move between Canvas and model. I don't think we have, or I have, oh, I have it, a model apps, a model driven apps in here. So I don't know who actually on uh, my team or my company is playing with uh, the sales app. Uh, I think this is something related to dynamics. Uh, I identify also projects on the web that, as you know, is totally built on top of Dataverse. So that's the reason why we are seeing here some model driven apps. So very cool. So I can move to Maker's activity, Maker activity, sorry. Um, in here, I'm going to see like different information. Interesting, I, here I have everything mixed. That means that I'm seeing here my Canvas apps and my model driven apps. Indeed, as you can see here, you are seeing Dynamics 365. Dynamics 365, you can see other makers. This is a colleague of mine, Rafael Ancino. Okay, see, he's the one that uh, installed or did something with the customer service hub. I don't know. And then we can move to the app inventory. And in the app inventory, actually, I can see all the apps that I have in here seems we also have in this tenancy Dynamics 365. That's the reason why you are seeing a lot of stuff. So you can see that there is something Dynamics 365 related to Dynamics 365 marketing. Also things coming from a power up trial, also something from field services. So a lot of stuff in here. I can move down to the environment level analytics, as I mentioned at the beginning. So in this case, the dashboard is going to be different. So in here, I'm seeing information about uh, the apps I have in a particular environment. That's not a problem because I can change. In this case, this is the default to my dev environment. So I can click on dev environment. As you can see, the period of time is the maximum is 20. Yeah, so I'm going to pack my laptop just in case. Okay, there we go. So I can move between uh, 28 at the maximum and or seven days or 14 days. So I'm going to click on apply. And then, of course, as expected, my dashboards are going to change a little bit more of activity in here. So I can see actually how I'm using my apps from which platform, mainly from Windows, not using my mobile devices. Um, uh, yeah, I can move a location. You're only going to see the Netherlands. Uh, when I did a session in Spanish about this same topic, uh, I have two locations. One was the Netherlands and the other one was in Spain, in Madrid. So yeah, little, little bit of information. Different information, sorry. If there are those errors, not that that's not the case. I'm going to see the errors on different charts over here. I can see also information about the service performance in general, and then I can move to connectors. If I go back to the maker um, environment in here um, for this particular program platform environment, then I can focus on actually taking a look at the analytics for a specific app. How do I do that? Well, I can just select the app. I can either click on analytics preview or click on the three dots and I have this, the same menu. So I'm going to click on analytics preview in this case. And as you can see, I have just a single tab where I can see similar information to the information I have in the environment level analytics. As you can see, 30 days, that's the inconsistence. Uh, this was refreshed, as you can see, uh, one day ago. And I can see here a game uh, like uh, um, from where I launched my application, how many times I launched it, uh, I started the app, um, daily active users, and so on. Let's go back to the Power Platform Admin Center because in here we can also take a look to the Dataverse analytics. And in here you are going to see the same information uh, I showed to you in the deck. So you can see the active users, API calls that are being used I guess mostly by our Dynamics 365 implementation with the different services we are using. Um, I can see also active users. So as you can see in here, uh, the file is very active. Then we have like um, uh, maybe uh, service accounts uh, for sure. Um, yeah, we can see like different information on this page. So I can move up. Um, I can see also mode of access. Indeed, as you can see here, <laughs> 
this is the uh, data uh, environment that, as you can see, is coming from Dynamics. So uh, you can see here granular information about the devices being used to access the, uh, the dataverse in this case, also used by entity. Very interesting here. So I don't know which entities are these ones, but yeah, you can see that you have analytics, system jobs, plugins, API calls, statistics, and mailbox uses. Mailbox usage. So more or less, this is everything we have in the box for Power Apps Analytics. So it's quite powerful, uh, very simple to use. Uh, so it's very straightforward actually to have uh, clear information about how everything is happening around your apps, depending on, on the level you are and the role you have, uh, what is happening. So let's go back to the slides. And now let's talk about Power Automate. Similar story. So we can talk about then level analytics, that's the very top top. And then we have environment analytics. And of course, we have single app analytics, but when, uh, not single apps, single Power Automate Pro. That's a, that's a, um, a spelling error in the deck. I will change before sharing the slides. And um, there, there is a little bit more because we also have the possibility to analyze actually if there are problems in our Power Automate flows with process insights. So to me, it's also a kind of monitoring because actually I can identify any kind of issues, any kind of bottlenecks in my flows or any opportunity of improvement in my Power Automate flows. So very, very similar format as you can see here. So talking about tenant level analytics, a kind of visualization quite similar to the visualization for power apps. Uh, so very focused on usage of our uh, power term flow. So total amount of flows I have, total executions of the flow, successful ones, failed ones, and of course, information about flows per environment. And then we are going to have like the list of our flows, um, the most used ones, and so on. So in terms of roles required to access, the same ones uh, we described for power apps. And of course, if for Power Apps 10 level analytics, I need to enable it. The same happens with Power Automate. Indeed, it's the same setting. So once I enable for Power Apps, I'm going to have enabled for Power Automate. So uh, two birds in in one stone, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, we have here, you have here in, uh, the different kind of uh, sections. So uh, yeah, I think it's, this is mistaken. So I, I know it's usage, yes, total flows, total runs, successful runs, as I say, or makes activity. So active flows in this case, creative flows, active makers and connections. And talking about um, for this analytics is available for, as you can see here is for Power Automate Cloud flows, not for desktop ones, interesting theme. And again, it's possible to download the analytics data to create your custom analytics reports. Then we can move down to environment level analytics. And in this case, the main difference that you can see here is that we are going to have analytics not only for cloud flows, but also for desktop ones. You know that desktop flows is the Microsoft uh, product for uh, uh, robotics process automation, RPA. So uh, here we are going to have different dashboards, different reports, and of course, different information display on those dashboards and those reports, such as flow runs, flows usage, flows created, errors in flows, shared flows, or uh, also information about connectors. In game, again, since we are talking about um, analytics at the environment level, the visualization window is 20 days, and the refresh cycle is the same every third three hours, every three hours. So uh, different sections we have in the environment level analytics uh, with different information, the different charts we are going to have there. We will see this in the demo too. And then of course we have the flow level analytics. So the to access to the flow level analytics, we will need to be environment admin or flow owner. Uh, interesting is that this is only available today for cloud flows. It's not available for desktop ones. Um, we can see here information about actions, usage, and errors. Visual visualization window, same uh, uh, same features as we have for uh, for single app. So it's 30 days, and the data refresh cycle is every 24 hours. Um, this is actually very cool, in my opinion. This is the process insights uh, that is let's say a tool you have for being able to gain insights 
on your cloud flows is not available for now for desktop flows and it's going to provide you information about your flow performance uh, it will allow you to identify bottlenecks in your flows or also to identify optimization opportunities so actually you can see if um, your flows are less than too much you can see in which part of the flow is the problem and you can try to think on a solution and of course fix it so this is a very very cool feature is um, quite new but it's available for you now and um, there is more so of course as you know uh, um, flows are executed depending on uh, the kind of trigger you have so you can see uh, actually how your workflows are doing in the run history you can see your sick flows the failed ones and you can do also some customization and as you can see here for every execution you have the possibility actually to set the details something that is very interesting if you are having problems in your flow because you can identify where where actually the flow failed so very cool too so let's go for the demo number two in here so let's talk about uh, power automated analytics data analytics so coming back to my demo environment I think I already have in here a uh, open mm, different thing I need so let's start at the top level power automated uh, tenant level analytics so in the power platform center I had to click on power automate then as you can see uh, I have selected environment level analytics so let's switch to tenant level analytics there we go and uh, yeah we can see uh, usage information maker activity and inventory activity so very similar um, information or very similar um, charts as you could so in the deck and again you can filter by different uh, environment parameters so you can choose the environment you want to be focused on um, you can also select the environment type and um, as you can see here we are having information that is related to my flows or the flows my makers have in the in the different environments so i can see the total runs successful one not a lot of failed interesting in the last uh, 30 days i guess three environments uh, with most of the products and as you can see here different uh, flows available that are normally uh, poor automated ones if i recall properly yes so i can move to makers uh, maker activity uh, section here not a lot of information over here so i can see actually active flows only three I will show you which ones. I can see also information about connections, and then I can see the inventory of my flows across the different environments in the internet. So yeah, a lot of them. I don't know how um, many of them are actually working. I guess um, uh, some of them are stopped. And I can click here and then move down to environment level analytics and uh, focus as you can see here not a lot of information but this is because of the environment i have here i can move to the default environment where i'm going to, we are going to see much more activity so again time period 7 to 7 to 28 days so i'm going to click on apply uh yeah boom you are going to see much more information because in the default environment we have much more flows doing things we can see information of our code flows desktop flows um yeah we can see daily runs weekly ones monthly so very very useful information no desktop flows i guess no surprises here so this is going to be empty usage of our power automated flows again we have uh, we can uh, work with cloud flows or desktop ones so in here you can see actually uh, by type so uh, schedule ones as you can see the majority of our power automated flows are scheduled but we have also triggered by something can be for instance when i add an item on a list a flow is going to be started and you can see also the trends in the use of the flows over different uh, dates in the last 20 days of course and again we can move to create flows i don't think we are going to see a lot of information okay one <laughs> interesting and then errors if there are okay yes some errors uh, but get we and as you can see path requests unauthorized share workflows that's interesting because as you can as you know uh, we can share workflows between different makers it seems that for the last four, uh, 28 days we didn't do that and then information about connectors being used 
I don't think we are going to see. Okay, we have we have a lot of, we have some information here. Okay, because we have we are using the common data services, we are using project on the web. So that's the reason we are seeing different connectors being used here. Microsoft Forms, that's correct. For instance, we have a very simple solution in my team to uh, to follow Scrum methodology instead of having uh, daily meetings because we are a lot of people. What we do is we have a Microsoft Forms form where everybody in the team can actually say what uh, he or she was doing yesterday and what he or she is going to do today. Uh, we capture this information from the form with a Power Automate flow and then we register that in a in a SharePoint list and then we send a, a daily a summary email to the project managers in the team. So yeah, that's the way of using Power Platform. No? So digitalizing different processes we use in our day to day. So next thing is to move to uh, analytics at the flow level. So for that, um, I need to go to actually the Power Auto Automate area here I am uh, in this step environment but I'm going to move to a different environment. I'm going to move to the default one. We will come back to this dev environment later in order to see custom analytics. So I'm going to move to the default environment where I have like three different flows in here, but I'm interested in the set with me. Yeah, this is the daily scrum sent. Uh, it's in B or in Spanish, sorry for that. But I, I can click in here and I can see the analytics of my flow. Also, if I click on these three dots, analytics for my flow. So as you can see here, I can see like different information for the last 30 days. So I can see actions in my flow. I can see also usage information. And if there are errors, I'm going to see in here. So no errors. So it seems the flow is working quite well. So I can go back in here. And the next thing interesting to me is that I can click on process insight preview. But before doing that, as you can see here, I also have the 20 day run history. It's very interesting. So you can see successful runs. I could edit columns that is interesting. So I can do some customization here, but you are going to see here a problem because this is apparently not supported by a shared power atomic flows. So if I click in edit columns, boom, something went wrong. But I want to show you this because you can see actually more information in this uh, day run history, and it's very interesting. So if I go back to my flows and I click on any of my available flows, this one com convert to PDF. And if I click in actually the flow just to access to the details page, not late. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are not going to see this or so for that. Uh, I don't know if I have a flow with actually we can see information. Let me check it because I wanted to show you maybe this one. Yeah, there we go. So uh, I ran this flow like some days ago, just uh, for taking a look at this. So one interesting thing here is that if you have information in the run history, you are going to have the possibility for your flows to actually edit the columns. And depending on the flow, you are going to see much more information that maybe can be useful to you in order to, to have some kind of monitoring of analytics in your run history. So I can click on the different columns and I can save it. And I'm going to see actually some information that is related to this specific execution of the flow. As you guess, the columns I'm going to have really depends on the design of my flow. Since in this case, I'm doing themes with emails. So let me edit it. That's the reason why I'm having metadata that is related to email actions. So that's the reason why I can get different information that is coming in this case from uh, doing themes with my email. So pretty cool in my opinion. So let's go back to my flows in here and let's go to share with me because the last thing I want to show you is the process insights. So for doing that, I'm going to show you uh, how it looks like for this um, flow we use for our daily scam. So I'm going to click in here and select, uh, click on the flow actually. And I'm going to click on the process insights preview. The first time you start the process insight is going to take some time to have everything ready. That's very important you know it. So it's not instant thing. As you can see, it's totally based on Power BI, uh, the dashboard you're going to see here. But the cool features, uh, the cool themes or the cool stuff is that we can see actually the average duration of our flow, maybe 18 
seconds for it's so simple for is too much something is gone and in this as you can see here in like dark red you are going to see that the problem is in the upper twitch there is a kind of loop in my throat that maybe is problematic so you can further investigate what is happening in here and see if there is a possibility to improve the actually the, the process the flow so yeah you can see more information about variations in, in frequency in time and you can actually access to the time analysis and see where actually you are spending most of the time in the flow so again they apply to each so apparently in the loop we have in the flow maybe it's not very uh, Optimus, so maybe I need to to do, the, to do a change. And then in here you have like a deep analysis of what is happening. So this is a super useful feature in my opinion, the process insight features for uh, identifying problems, issues, uh, opportunities of improving, improvement in our power atomic flows. So let's go back to the deck to continue talking about more themes. So I know a lot of content, but I hope you are finding this very useful. That's the goal. So more things, and for that, for this one, I don't have a demo. So one thing you may be asking, OK, what about building something uh, by myself, but not using the sporting data I can have at the environment level or even at the app level or the power to level? Is there like a global feature that allows me to export or do a global export of data? That is gathered behind the scenes by the power platform, uh, by the power platform services that get usage data, makers activity, and so on. Yes, it is. This is called the data usage export. The interesting thing here is that you actually can export your data to an Azure Data Lake, and then in from this Azure Data Lake, you can start building your own Power BI reports. That means that in order to be able to use this feature, of course, you are going to need. Uh, um, as your subscription, a resource group, and uh, yeah, setting a storage account uh, that is going to be used in Azure Data, Data Lake. And also, bad news that you need to have Power Apps Premium licensing in order to be able to use it. So that means that at the moment, we don't have like a data analytics Power Platform APIs. I remember to have a discussion with a very friend of mine, Mario Treva, about this, and he said, you don't need it because you have like different data analytics uh, options out of the box. But I say, I would like to have it. In the same way, we have uh, the uh, Microsoft 365 usage uh, APIs in, in the Microsoft Graph. So why not in the Power Platform? I think it will come. But let's say this is the starting point of having something very similar. So super cool feature. Next thing is talking about telemetry. That means auditing events that are happening in the Power Platform. So as you can see here, I'm not going to be able to show you this in the in my demo environment. Maybe in the Tena, in the production Tena, yes, because yesterday when I was just uh, doing the demos, I didn't find actually the Power Apps events. I don't know why. I found uh, the Power Atomic ones are also the Namex 5, but the Power Apps, apps didn't appear. So it's strange. But anyway, since I have it, I had this screenshot in the deck, you can see that for Power Apps, you can actually um, have some telemetry about events of apps being created, edited, deleted, launched, published, and so on. So if something wrong is happening with your apps, the, with the apps created by your makers, you can actually find what's happened, what happened, sorry, in the audit log search in Microsoft 365, in the Microsoft Preview Center. So uh, roles to use this um, audit log search, Microsoft 365 Global Admin, nothing to see here with the Power Platform. You can be Security Admin, Global Reader Admin, Security Reader Admin, and then you can see uh, information about events happening in Canvas apps, model driven apps, power atomic flows, not desktop ones for the moment, and also telemetry that is related to Dynamics 365. How many days the information is retaining here? 90 days, uh, that's the standard, or if you are lucky and you have E5 licensing, then one year. Of course, you can export the data with PowerShell or custom APIs, and then export to maybe a custom database or even a data lake or whatever storage you want to use it and then on top of that build your own reports. This is what is what is being audited today. 
in regards to power up, power automate, and also DLP policies. And let's go for the third demo. So in this case, I'm going to make use of this production tenant where I'm an admin. So I'm going to click on the admin uh, shortcut. I'm going to access them. The Microsoft Pool View Center is still called compliance here in the menu, as you can see. But this everything is Pool View now. And in here, I had to click on audit. There we go. And as you can see, we have like a new search experience. Lucky of us, I already have leaked this search ID yesterday, so it can take advantage because, as you know, if you use the new search experience instead of the classic search, the search is asynchronous. That means that search is going to be uh, like uh, execute, but you are not going to get results immediately. You have to uh, wait until a job behind the scenes do different things. Uh, so it's uh, putting your request in a queue and then a job is coming, taking your request and coming back to you with the results. So in this case, as you can see, my query last uh, yesterday took like seven minutes, quite a long, let me say that. And I can see here that it was related to Power Automate uh, activity or Power Automate events. So I can click on complete and I can see actually the results. So seven minutes is too much for so poor results. Let me say that. So I can click on any uh, recording here and I can see some details of events being added, added by the feature. So in this case was an edit flow operation and I can see some ideas and I can see, yeah, uh, who actually was Miguel Angel, one of my uh, workmates. Um, uh, what he was doing in here. So yeah, you can have a kind of information for auditing your flows with the other log search. Uh, yeah, so let me, last thing is, if I look for, as you can see here, if I look for power up, I'm not seeing anything. Like an uh, interesting thing, if I'm getting information about power pages, something I'm not covering in, in my deck. So apparently we can also have some kind of analytics for power pages, but not in the out of the box feature I have been showing to you. So let's go back to the slides in here. And yeah, in this case, we are going to move quite uh, fast because we have also added in features for the Dataverse. This is actually built on top of Dynamics 365, so we can have audit history for single record or full Dataverse audit log to see what is happening out of my Microsoft Dynamics uh, implementations or model driven apps. And yeah, in the audit log search, we can also add themes happening to model driven apps. So everything related to custom entities, bulk actions, as you can see here, so we can get some results and analyze them. And then what about connecting my uh, apps, my flows with Azure Application Insights? Is this something that I can do? Yes, we can do it. Not only for uh, Power Apps, that means Canvas Apps model driven, but also for Power Pages. And in here, what I'm going to see is just typical information I can see when I use Azure Application Insight with my websites. That means I can see information such as location, operating system being used, browser use, browsers use, um, uploading performance, details of user sessions, events happening, and so on. So the question here is, how do I use my Azure Application Insights with my Power Apps or my Power Automate? Well, with, in the case of Power Apps, the answer is it really depends. Depends on if we're talking about Canvas App, Model Dynam App, app or Power Pages. And the only thing we need, obviously, is to have an Azure, application, uh, Azure subscription and then on top of that, configure Azure Application Insights. So that means that required to have an Azure Resource Group, and uh, yeah, deploy their Azure Application Insights. I think, yeah, this is a kind of a demo uh, within the deck where you can see actually different events that are happening around a Canvas app, can be a model driven app, or can be Power Pages. Um, yeah, we can have a lot of details, something in wrong was happening in my app, so I can easily identify what happened there. This is what is being displayed here. Um, yeah, I can also be focused on performance and so on. So let's go to the demo. We are almost there. So first thing you may ask yourself if, is how do you actually use Azure Application Insights in your apps 
Well, I want to show you uh, how uh, we can do this in a Canvas app. So I think um, I have somewhere. Yeah, this app. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. So this is a very simple app that allows you to book one of your uh, rooms in your configuring your tenant. And as you can see here, uh, enable the use of Azure application types in an app is very straightforward. So this is the top level of my app of the different objects I have. And as you can see, there is a property here that is the instrumentation key of Azure Application Insights. It's the only thing I need to, uh, to take into account. So I grab, the, I grab this uh, key from Azure Application Insights. I will show you this in a minute. And then I uh, just configuring the instrumentation key uh, attribute for my app. And then the only thing I have to do is just to start using the app and start gathering events or information from my app. So if I go to my Azure subscription, this is the Azure Application Insights uh, resource I configured. So I call Power Apps Apps Insights. This is the instrumentation key you uh, you saw a few a few seconds ago. Um, with that, then I enable to get information about my apps. Mm, yeah, I enable this Azure subscription like uh, yeah. There we go. A free hours before the session because uh, my credit uh, my credit was finished and the good thing is that I'm starting to see information that is coming from my power apps, my flows but I have to be focused in here on events not a lot of information because as I say I enabled the uh, subscription like uh, two hours ago but I already have nine events and these events can come from my power apps or can come from my power automate flows so I can go down and actually you can see yeah Something is happening in the Netherlands. This is coming from my Canvas app, app and this is coming from a Power Atomic Flow. I will show to you. So I can click, yeah, on the uh, track trace. There we go. As you can see here, we are having events coming from the Power App. So I can click in here, and I can see actually details of what's happening with my Power App app. So I can have like different details of what page was being uh, used by my users and details about what they were doing in the app. So let's go. There is very useful information over the internet about how you actually can configure the use of uh, Azure Application Insights in your app. So for Canvas app, it's very straightforward. For model driven apps and for no portal, Power Pages is like adding a script to your apps. So very, very easy to configure. So let's go back to the slides because we need to go to the last part. I know we are in out of time a little bit. So what about Custom themes. What can you do? Well, this is a kind of architecture. Actually, this comes from Todd Baginski, that is also a Microsoft MVP. He's a business apps MVP. I saw a video of him about this architecture, and I say, okay, this is actually very, very cool. So, as you can see, you can build your custom telemetry analytics with a custom connector. So that's why I say you can use it is in your power apps on power uh, um, power atomic flows. And the good thing is that uh, using a custom connector, you can get your custom telemetry data and store what you want. Can be SQL Azure, can be Azure Application Insights. Sorry for my Spanish, but as you can see here, I'm capturing custom events, exceptions, or usage data. So what do I need here? Well, obviously, as you can see, this is a custom connector. It's using an Azure function. I'm going to need Azure. Uh, where I'm going to have my APIs, can be Azure functions, can be a web API that is going to be called by custom connector and then I need a storage where I'm going to store information about events, exception, and uses. Then we have the COE starter kit that uh, if you have the opportunity to install in your tenancy is going to provide a lot of very useful data analytics information such as as you can see here top 20 environments, top app makers, focus on only power apps, as you can see here, and um, per location, and then in here about environments, very, very nice charts uh, based on Nusuris Power BI, and much more. So yeah, this is why this is the perfect tool for uh, governance uh, of the Power Platform. Um, yeah, before the summary, let me show you actually how I use uh, Azure Application Insight in a Power Automate flow. This was done by uh, Ruben Ramos. He's also a workmate uh, uh, in my company. 
So what he did actually was just to develop a custom connector uh, that was using an Azure function. And then this custom connector can be used in a power automate flow. The power automate flow is very, very, very simple, very, very silly, if you allow me. So I can click on my flows and I can click on share with me, but not in this environment. I had to go to the power app step environment in here. So share with me. Yes, this is monitoring Azure application insights. It's a very, very simple flow. And what this flow is doing is that every time I add an item on a list, on a cell point list, is going to call my custom connector. And this custom connector, what it's doing is just calling Azure function that is registering information in Azure application insights. In this case, what we are doing is forcing the power automated flows to fail. And we are registering, uh, obviously, the failed information. So if I click on the flow in here, as you can see, everything was failing. So I can click, for instance, in this instance. Obviously, is failing in my uh, in the action where I'm using my custom connector. I have here. Uh, I don't remember where this this is. Well, the cast the connector is somewhere. Uh, I I don't remember where, but it's a custom one. And if I go back to Azure Application Insights and uh, I click on Events, you are going to see here this track trace that is very interesting. That is the section that is happening in my Power Automate flows. Flow. So this was on purpose. So I can see actually that my flow is failing and I'm uh, capturing the event. So very, very nice architecture, very, very nice to be able to uh, use in combination with uh, Azure Application Insights. So that was the last uh, demo. So let's go to the slides. And yeah, let's talk about uh, a recap of uh, my session. So as you can, uh, as you have, uh, you have been uh, listening, um, we have like um, a lot of out of the box features for data analytics and for monitoring. Uh, some of them are coming from what we have in the Power Platform, so the tenant level analytics, the environment level analytics, and then pair up the Power Automate analytics. We can also make use of the Microsoft 365 or the log for telemetry. We can use Azure Application Insights with my apps, but also with Power Automate. And of course, I always have the option of build by myself. That means I can build something for uh, having my custom telemetry. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to export data uh, at the different levels, and we have the data export feature that is actually much more powerful. Well, uh, also very interesting the uh, possibilities we have in the uh, COI starter kit. Uh, it's a, a very clear example of how we can build custom themes. Um, yeah, finally, we can begin uh, by creating our custom connector, um, uh, graph custom information from our apps and our flows. Some uh, references uh, you will see in my deck, like three slides of this, in I'm not mistaken. Some publicity of myself, the Office 365 for IT, IT Pro. If you are interested, you can get a discount thanks to Tony Redmond. This one is uh, from my friend Gustavo, is focused on development, the same thing, you can get a discount. And if you have any questions, is the moment. I think you have to make use of the Q&A uh, app that is uh, configured in this meeting. And uh, while we are receiving questions, thanks uh, again uh, for being in my session. Thanks Jason and the rest of the organization crew for having me. It's very important you provide feedback about the event in general and, of course, about myself, how I can improve. And don't forget, this is very important. Uh, super cool. Uh, this, um, yeah, uh, this price you are going to, we are going to have in the raffle. And uh, yeah, with that, this that's everything from my side. Of so, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So I hope you have found this session interesting.